R video tutorial on acceptance rejection sampling in R part three. If you haven't watched the other two parts as well as the video that comes before that, I have a link uh, above that will lead back to the previous uh, video. I would highly recommend you watch those if you're unfamiliar with what we're doing. So on this one, all I want to do is take this automated acceptance rejection sampling uh, algorithm and I want to put it in a for loop so that I can generate exactly the number of random deviates that I want. Again, we've been playing with the F distribution with three numerator degrees of freedom and 20 denominator degrees of freedom. Here is the code that we had from last time. I put it up here part three, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this. Why am I going to copy and paste this? Just so I don't lose anything. And I'm going to paste it down below so that we can put a loop around it. Okay, so I'm moving down here. I'm going to paste it, and we want to put a loop around it. So we want to do a for loop, one, two, and one, or I'll just call it number of samps, one. And this will open brace, and then come down here, close brace. We're going to have to store off the result someplace. I'm going to make a container to do that. Anytime you do a for loop, Typically, you're going to want to restore, uh, restore the samples, so I'm going to call this samples1, and I'm going to store it in the ith bin of this thing, and uh, this will have in it my x star 1, the one that I've accepted. So remember, the while loop's not going to kick out an x star 1 until there's one that is acceptable. So let me put here, store the result. And I'll tab that in as well, just so it matches up. All right, so I need to create a container, which I've already named. So I'm going to make samples1. I'm going to repeat 0 and samples1 times, which I haven't defined m samples1 yet. This is the number of samples that I want to pull. So n samples1, let's suppose we want 10 of them. Uh, I'm also going to here comment this out so we don't see all this information it it'll cause everything to run slower so i'm going to print that out and then i'm just going to yeah i'll just comment it out right now and this should work and it should give me exactly 10 samples so we'll give this a go and see what happens and i can come over here type in samples one and i should see 10 samples from this thing Great. So then what I could do real quick, if I wanted to, is I could make a thousand samples. And this will probably take a little bit longer than the last one, just because it is going to take a lot more computation time. And let's see here it, what this looks like. So I'm just going to do the head of samples one, just so I can see what it looks like. And sure enough, I have the numbers. Now I have my picture over here still. If you remember from a pre few videos back we actually made this picture and what I could do is I could actually put these points on here so I'm gonna do that right now so I'm gonna put these points that I just sampled from this on here and we can see how well it looks with what we have so I'm gonna repeat let's oh wait the, these need to be my samples one and then I'm gonna repeat let's see zero as my height let's see how many times do I want to do this I want to do this and samples one times that's my y value so it'll put the points down here at the zero and it'll just push them across there and we'll make the color equals green uh, i'll make them sea green because i think it shows up better all right so i have this does it put them on my picture here and sure enough there they are so my picture these pop up here let me zoom in here so we can see it clear if you look the most of the points are down here where that's the highest density the highest likelihood and there's a few points out here where it's low density and you can see them thin out a little bit notice none of them will be bigger than eight because we purposely picked our lower bound and upper bound to be eight why did I do that? I kind of did it arbitrarily. I could have picked it at 10. But the point is, is this upper bound and lower bound do affect your samples because if you choose this too low, you can truncate this dramatically and not get samples from the distribution you think you're getting samples from. 
All right, so we've done everything we need to do to automate this acceptance sampling, acceptance rejection sampling algorithm, and now we can move on to the next technique in the next video. See you there.